All right, so let's uh, talk about number 50 on page 104. Um, this is the one where we've got a uh, person pushing a lawnmower. Uh, it says a person pushes a 14 kilogram lawnmower at a constant speed with a force of 88 newtons. By the way, what does the fact that it's a constant speed mean? It probably means that the acceleration is zero, or I guess we could say that the net force equals zero. Um, the angle is 45 degrees to the horizontal. Draw a free body diagram of all the forces acting on this lawnmower. All right, so free body diagram. So we know we're going to have gravity. We also know we're going to have this applied force, but this applied force is going to be acting at this angle. I'm going to... I'm going to Draw this a little bit bigger so that it's just easier to keep everything separate. So there's my force of gravity. My applied force is going to be at this angle here. Um, and then let's think about this. We're going to have to have a normal force. But your normal force, you should see it should be bigger than gravity. And the reason why is because if I want my net force to be zero... Um, this this applied force, right, I'm going to have to break it into components. I'm going to have to have an X component and a Y component. And the normal is going to have to cancel out both the force of gravity and the Y component. So it's got to be, if I draw this to scale, it's, it's going to be a little bit bigger here, right, because it should be the length of the force of gravity plus the length of FAY, and that's my normal force, right? And we also said it's going at a constant speed. Our net force is zero, which means our friction has to entirely cancel out our FAX. And we said our net force is zero. And I'm going to put my vector arrow here because we know net force is a, is a vector, which basically means that I can write this as, as two different equations. I can write it as FX equals zero and as FY equals zero. Let's look here. So here's my free body diagram, and just to finish up these equations, uh, my forces in the x direction are going to be FAX minus friction. And my forces in the y direction, I should have three. I should have normal minus um, the force of gravity minus the FAY. Right. Let me just write that bigger, or write that in one line so that that looks better. Fy equals zero equals Fn minus Fg minus Fay. So there we go, part A, free by diagram. Um, okay. What does part B say? Part B says, the horizontal, uh, calculate the horizontal friction force on the motor. Well, I think we're going to have to start with this equation, right? We know that 0 equals FAX minus FF, which if I add FF to both sides, I see that FF is the same as FAX. If I look at the triangle I have here, you should see that I can write... Uh, the cosine of 45 degrees should be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, so FAX minus, or divided by FA. So in other words, um, FAX is FA times the cosine of 45. So there we go. Force of friction equals... Fa times the cosine of 45, which would be 88 newtons, times the cosine of 45 degrees. I'm getting 62.2 newtons. All right, and so that's part B. Part C says calculate the normal force. 
right, so part C, I'm going to try and calculate the normal force. Uh, so I think I'm going to go ahead and start with um, this Fy equation that I had here, where I said 0 equals the normal force minus the force of gravity minus Fay. Um, so just solving this for normal force, I would get normal force should equal gravity plus Fay. We know that gravity equals mass times gravity. Uh, if we set up uh, an equation for Fay, we see we're using the, the sine of 45 degrees should equal Fay, the opposite, divided by the hypotenuse Fa. So this should be Fa times the sine of 45 degrees. And so that's my normal force. So plugging in, I've got 14 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, 88 newtons, sine of 45. Sorry, I'm running out of, running off the screen there. So I'm getting a normal force of 199 newtons. And finally, part D says, what if I want to, what force must I, must I exert on the lawnmower to accelerate it from rest? So rest means V naught equals zero to 1.5 meters per second in a time of 2.5 seconds. Well, why is it giving me all this? Probably because it wants me to find an acceleration. So we know acceleration is delta V over delta T. So that'd be 1.5 meters per second over 2.5 seconds. So 0.6 meters per second squared. Uh, why is that important? Well, let's go back up here. Our free body diagram changes in this case, right? Because uh, our... Um, we now have, we have an additional force. It's saying, assuming that the friction force is the same. So if I, if I just real quick re-sketch this free body diagram down here, I have the same friction force of what? 62.2 newtons. Um, I got a normal force. I got a force of gravity. I've got an applied force, but this time my applied force is going to be bigger. Because I want my net force in the x direction to be Fax minus Ff. And this time that's not equal to zero. This time that's equal to Ma. Um, so mass times the acceleration we just calculated should equal Fax, which is the new one we want to find, minus the force of friction we got before, which was 62.2. So, um, masses, I should have plugged that in. 14.6. Well, I'm getting what? 8.4. Newtons equals Fax minus 62.2. So Fax equals... Why am I doing this on my calculator? Whatever. Okay, 70.6. So that's my new uh, Fax. Now, if, if we're really being careful, uh, that's not what it was asking. It was asking for um, the new applied force, which is the hypotenuse here. So we've got an equate, we got a triangle where we've just found, ugh, what a terrible triangle. Uh, we've got a, uh, we've got an, an applied force I'm trying to find where I just found that this side is 70.6 newtons. If this is a 45 degree angle on that side, 70.6 newtons. This side is also 70.6 newtons. 
um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, um, and we get an applied force, um, a new applied force of 99.8 newtons.